Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Look, this is game time. What we learned in the 60s and early 70s were preparation for today's time. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was to get you prepared for the future. The teachings of the Panthers were to get you ready for the future. The teachings of Noble Drew Ali was to get you prepared for the future, meaning today's time. We should be, our cup should be fluid, overflowed with oil, meaning wisdom and knowledge. Today, all those powerful uh, knowledge and information and science that was given to us to prepare us for a time such like the time that we're presently living in. This is it. You need to know salvation. You need to know how to organize. You need to know how to build your own society. You need to know how to be sovereign. You need to know the value of a name. You need to know knowledge of self. You need to study. Now, in saying all of that, let me get into what tonight's show is about. And tonight's show is about the gun laws that are being passed in Texas. Which means that if you're not a felon, you have the right to carry a concealed handgun and you don't need a license to do so. Now, you might ask, well, what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. That means that whether you are or whether you have a gun or not, You have a gun. I'm explaining that in just a minute. But whether you have a gun or whether you don't have a gun, in the state of Texas, you will be assumed as if you have a handgun concealed on you. So with that being said, what do you do about that? Right. What can be done about that? Let me explain. If you are standing, let's say, on someone's property, right? You don't live there. You know, you just hanging out. You know, your house might be two blocks over, but, you know, you, you stop. Probably got on your cell phone. You dialing up someone. You talking or whatever in front of someone's house. They come out. Hey, what you doing on my property, right? Uh, nah, man, I bet. And you raise your cell phone up. Bam, they shoot kill you, shoot you in the chest, you're gone, dead, out of here, right? Police ride up. Why you shoot him? I thought he was going for a gun, right? Uh, do you know this guy? No. Um, what was he doing uh, at your residence? He was trespassing. That's a crime. And uh, I assumed he had a gun. Well, yeah, you should assume he had a gun because, you know, hey, it's uh, legal now, and uh, everybody has a gun. How do you know if he had a gun or not? And how do you know if he was a felon who couldn't have a gun? Because they're gonna they're gonna figure like they're gonna take into account of how many felons in the state of Texas. Everybody else, you have a gun on you, whether you do or not. You gotta know the law. Now, black people, but right, if they entice you. Right, because they feel like they can entice us into a draw us in with words or whatnot, and then we will use a a threatening uh, response. Right? They'll say, uh, like, like the guy, like the 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 general in the Air Force general, right, who was in Virginia when the uh, 
store clerk asked him, um, good morning. And he replied to her, uh, would it be a good morning if I called you a nigger? Right. They let him off because they said that his language didn't, uh, wouldn't have incited any type of violence. Right. I say that to say that they'll entice you and say, um, you know, you know, I don't want to do it, but something inside of me uh, wants to call you a nigger. Would that offend you? And if you turn around and say, uh, call me a nigger, motherfucker, I'll kick your ass, right? He going to shoot and say he verbally threatened me. And I was I assumed he was getting ready to go for his gun, right? Uh, do you know this gentleman? No. I don't even know why he stopped on my property. He was trespassing. I thought he could have been uh, trying to uh, break in my place or whatnot. You know, he's gone. Right. Now, black people with guns, you have to, if you shoot someone, you have to tell the police, hey, I was aiming for center mass. I was trying to eliminate the threat. He called me a nigger. He reached in his pants with all this racial tension. I dropped him. Right. I mean, with the mindset that some of us have today, I know you're saying, my God, right? Wow, wait, wait, my God. I mean, has it really gotten that far, you know? Um, can I see myself defending myself against a white person? I mean... After all, you know, they painted Jesus white. I, is, it, is that right? Is that even right for me to even think about shooting the white person to protect myself? You know, you got to make your own mind up, right? I'm just letting you know that in this current state, this trap, gun law trap that they're currently getting ready to uh, make into law. Be careful. Know where you're at. Be conscious of what you're doing. You should have already been soaking and basking in the right knowledge. Right. If your pastor tells you, don't listen to Farrakhan. I don't want to hear nothing about no teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? Then you should know that he's your enemy. Right. If your pastor tells you them Black Panthers weren't nothing but trouble starters, then you know he's not for you. If your pastor tells you, don't tell me nothing about no noble Drew Ali, then you know that he is against you and don't listen to nothing he has to say. Because the time that we're living in, that knowledge that they taught you all, hell, from the 30s, up until the 70s should have been passed down we should be aware we should know who we dealing with it shouldn't be no surprise when we when you put your heart and you scream for mercy and he still beats you like they did ronald green like they did george floyd and we were so people were still shocked and surprised man they've been doing this since we've been over here it's nothing new why are we acting like this brand new all this racism and police brutality and police beatings and uh, it's what, you know, it's not new. It's just that we never had the proper response. We never united like we should have. Right. When we, when they were trying and, and, and it wasn't, man, it wasn't about the physical makeup of the group let's take the black panthers with the black berets the black jackets the black gloves the black fists in the air right don't get caught up into that that's just you know that's just dress that's just camouflage right the real thing which we should have grabbed hold of was the feeding program feed the youth education and the study uh your, your rights under the law so you can know how to defend yourself that's what you should have took hold on. The, the, just putting the clothes on and putting the fists in the air. That's not putting knowledge in your head. Right? Learn, you learn the laws behind uh, stand your ground. Right? 
uh, uh, know how to defend yourself if you come uh, face to face with an opposer, right? And learn how not to get trapped, right? Purposely, because they sitting trapped, right? Sitting trapped, uh, because they know that there's cameras everywhere, phones everywhere, right? They want to give you a look, right? You you could not be doing anything, right? And 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 you sitting at a stoplight, and all of a sudden he he slams on his brakes and hunks his horn real loud. You turn around. And waving your hands and, you know, if you, I'm a F you, so-and-so, he take it as a threat, put on side and shoot you. Hey, man, I thought he'd be shooting. I got camera footage. I mean, you really got to be alert, right? Because if you notice, the colonizer, he's always going to stay cool and quiet, right? Do certain things to get a reaction out of you. You rarely going to get a reaction out of him, right? Look how calmly... Uh, Derek Chauvin with just hands in his pocket, putting his knee on George Floyd's neck, right? Right. Because in his mind, he felt like, I can get away with this. Right? This this guy uh, is the aggressor, which he wasn't the aggressor. Times are changing. You have to know how to survive in these present times. Now, say you're driving down the highway and the police pulls you over, right? First, turn your recorder on on your telephone to re- to record the whole interaction with said officer, right? The reason why you want to do that is because, look, man, look, if you don't have an insurance policy um, that's going to take care of your wife and your children, turning on that recorder is your insurance policy, right? Because just so happens if you say, okay, let me, let me give you an overview. You're driving. Police pulls you over. Let me see your license and registration. Well, look, officer, um, I'm putting my hands out the window. I'm going to turn this way and, and keep my hands uh, on the window. Uh, if you instruct me, to go into my glove box to get my license and insurance, then you need to tell me that step by step, license first, then insurance. Other than that, I don't answer any questions, right? And if he takes out his gun and kills you, you got that recorded. That way your family can seek, can sue that officer and seek uh, uh, civil charges against that officer and sue the police department you might be gone, but that's your insurance policy. At least your family can get some money, you know what I'm saying, due to your death. I know it's sad, but uh, we got to look at all angles. Why? I'll tell you why. Because we as black people, we can't live for today. We have to live for tomorrow and the future to change the current situation. Because we've been living for the day since we've been here, why you think we still facing the same issues? They doing 1921 Tulsa, Oklahoma. They they doing a series on the bombing of that place, right? Nothing changed. So now we gotta project our works, project our knowledge and our mindset into the future, and study and start creating the future we want ten years down the line today. Leave, get, get, get untangled with the colonizer. Drop that and start building 10 years down the line for your future. Buying land, teaching your children nanotechnology, sciences, as brother uh, uh, Waleed Muhammad was saying, and brother Derek Jabril, a higher knowledge, a higher self, a narr- uh, narrative, the narrative, right? Is the title of the show, and I previously I thank them for allowing me to be on that show. We did, I did a show with them um, this past Sunday. But what I'm saying is, we have to think wisely now. Getting upset, protesting, marching, singing, 
That's dead. Right. What we have is the best tools in our arsenal is the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which is given to him by Master Farad Muhammad. The science. It's called Supreme Wisdom. Study that. Read the message to the black man and create a future based on that knowledge. Learn how to be sovereign through the teachings of the most honorable, noble Drew Ali. Right? Learn some Garvey. You know? But build a future based on knowledge in the sciences and mathematics. And get from ta- uh, and, and stop being locked in with your colonizer. Who cares? Who cares what he thinks? Right? Who cares what they're doing with Donald Trump and trying to stop the vote? We so far beyond that. Y'all can have that shit. They can have it. We moving so far down the line to where we building our own reality that they can't even see. It, it, it already been stated that hell in 2045... White people will be the majority. Uh, they are already the, the I mean, will be the minority. They are already the minority in Philadelphia. It's already happening. So you need to build uh, up, up and above and over them, and build your future. Right now, they, now they trying everything uh, with these new voter laws and the gun laws and whatnot. But come on. If you study, look, it's called supreme wisdom. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me you know what? You, y'all so right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here talking about supreme wisdom, right? But I do, I got to give you all an example of, of what that is. Y'all, hold on, let me walk and get this book, right? So I can, so you can understand what you need to know and why you need to know it and why you need to read it, right? I'm sitting here going on about supreme wisdom, and some of you might be saying, "Well, what is that?" Get, I mean, get, break it down for me. You know what's going on. So, let me break some of this down for you real quick. Hold on, y'all, bear with me for a moment. Should I go page one? Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay, we'll start right here. And this is from the Army Elijah Muhammad. This was written to the Muslims of number one Chicago, right? It states, the following is the original rules of instruction to the laborers of Islam and the title of Muslim given by our Savior before his departure with a footnote of a few words of explanation to lay pressure upon their minds. Wait, stop right there. When you lay pressure upon someone's mind, right, it allows you to think outside your normal circumference. Pressure challenges you to create and generate enough force and power to move from one spot to another spot. You're not stagnated. It allows you to create motion. So you need to be challenged, right? Still sharp and still, right? Okay. To lay pressure upon their minds of their many errors in the past and present that they may see the light and walk therein. I thank you, Elijah Muhammad. Right. So that pressure, it allows you to come out the darkness to see the light and walk in the light. But you can't do that without what? Knowledge. And if you walk in the light, you see in everything that comes up in the darkness and you're able to defeat it. That's why they want to keep you blind, deaf, and dumb. But that's why they come up with these false narratives to make black people seem like all we want to do is dance and entertain. And, you know, you know how the game go, right? Now, look. Read a little bit for you. Now, this is Supreme Wisdom. It says, Instructions given to the laborers by our Savior, W.D. Farad Muhammad. 
The student must study his assignment. Each student should copy the answers of lessons of Minister Elijah Muhammad and study until this that until the student is able to memorize by heart all answers to of said lesson one. <clears throat> Why? <clears throat> because oh my god, man, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. When you write something down, right, especially if you take a page out of a, a, a book, take a page out of a magazine and copy every word, right? One, is, it, one it's improving your penmanship. Two, it's improving your vocabulary, right? It's improving your uh, understanding of words, right? And it's stretching your mind. So that's benefit, right? Because you become, when you do that, you become a new person. You're not the same person you were prior to doing it. Mm. Here, lesson number one is said to be the student's assignment. First, lesson number one lays the base of our work today. So you can get a clear understanding of what you're doing. And give the student a clear knowledge of himself and his heavenly home, the best part of the earth, and who is the enemy to him and his nation, and why the enemy and righteous could not live together, and why was the righteous able to cast out his enemy. This teaches the student what he must do with the enemy of the righteous today. The righteous nation is now living in every part of the planet Earth. Therefore, the enemy must now be removed in every part of the planet Earth. Look, man, today is teaching you how to deal with the enemy of truth. Now, the enemy of truth, he don't want to, he really, he's tired. He's tired. He's waiting on you to stand up and be righteous so you can cast him out. But he can't go until you wake up. He can't believe, the enemy can't believe that we fell in love with this world. (laughs) Because this world was built on on lies. Right? On a false foundation. And we fell in love with the false foundation. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Why is stress made to the Muslims to copy the minister Elijah Muhammad's answer? The past history shows that the Almighty Allah sends prophets and apostles for the people's God and example, and through them his mystery was revealed. And those who followed the apostle would see the light, meaning the mystery, right? God didn't reveal everything, right? Because in time, everything will be what? Revealed. So God sends his man, right, to show that he is God, to reveal certain things to a people to bring them into the light. Because prior to him coming and giving you the knowledge, you was in the dark. But what happens when you in the the colonizer world, what happens is God man's come. He comes, he gives you the knowledge, he brings you into the light. And once you get into the light, the first, even the first stage of the light, right? You say, oh man, it's comfortable here. Well, I don't want to go no more. And, and man, it, uh, it was, uh, you know what? It wasn't difficult uh, getting here. I think I could have got here by myself. Then you get arrogant. That's how the game goes, man. That's how the game go. Wow. Wow. Each student must qualify his or herself for positions awaiting them. Meaning nothing is given to you in life. 
You got to qualify yourself in everything that you do. When you're a baby crawling, you have to practice standing up till you qualify yourself to stand. If you don't keep practicing pulling yourself up to stand, you will never stand. You crawl for the rest of your life. That's very important. That's mathematics. That's science. That's cracking atoms, as Brother Nasir would say. He, I hear them atoms cracking. Right? Now, this is a plea to those, I don't want to, I'm not going to call them 85. Right? I'm going to tell you why. why. Why I'm not calling them 85. Even though I know it says 85, I'm going to tell you why I'm calling them. Because Man, I I soldiered, bro. I fought with what they would deem as eighty five was intelligent, and 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 the, and the thing about it is, carry carry some of the knowledge and some of the teachings naturally within them. Didn't even know what they were. D- didn't was was doing things in a way that was carried over. I don't know if from genetic coding or memory in the genes, or or the connection that their uh, great 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 grandparents was had knowledge Muslims and passed that knowledge on, and and it came down to just. Uh, a few words or a few actions or a few deeds that would be done. And you're like, ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's life. They're already life. It's just a matter of drawing that life out even more. Right? And the method. See, some of the method that is being used to draw the life out of the people from those who claim they there to civilize the people. The problem is you you try to make the people into you. Or you try to you try to use their uh, lack of knowledge to make your light shine brighter. That makes sense. It don't work like that. Because. Because just like. You know something about them. They know something about you. They know what you're doing. Can't put their finger on it. But they feel energy. Why? Why? Because they have melanin. Melanin communicates with each other. Melanin gives off energy. Melanin receives energy. Melanin knows a righteous uh, energy and it knows a negative energy, so it might don't know how to properly respond to that negative energy. So what it does is to protect itself. It just shuts down and won't come around you. That's how the game go. So it's not about us as individuals, although it's about us as individuals. Right? Because master yourself as an individual. Right? And then when you master yourself, it's not about, hey, look at me. It's about, man, I want to see you master yourself. I want to see you master yourself. I want to see so many people master themselves to where when I come outside my door, it's just peace everywhere. Just peace because everybody is vibrating on a higher plane. That's the game. Not saying it's a game. I'm just saying, I'm I'm saying that in in the sense of how they say, uh, don't hate the player, hate the game. Well, then create a game you love. Is all I'm saying. We gonna pick this up, man. We gonna pick this up. Bro, pick radio. We out.